What is up YouTube? Welcome to Ski Trav's Guide on how to film water skiing. In today's video, I'm going to break it down and share with you all on how I film water skiing in terms of the various angles, mounts and camera settings so that you can recreate this at home. For those of you who are new here and don't know me, over the last 10 years I've created some really unique photos and videos that has won multiple GoPro photos of the day, including the GoPro Million Dollar Challenge. So today, I'm sharing it all with you. For those of you who get bored easily like I do, on the right hand side over here and link down below, I'm going to drop some links so you can quickly navigate yourself throughout the video to find the important bits that you wish to watch. Enjoy the video. So firstly, let's talk cameras. Now, you don't necessarily need to have the latest camera to shoot some great water skiing content. I've had the GoPro Hero 3 Black all the way up to the Hero 9 Black now and I've always found it's easy to shoot some great content. It's just about being clever with the different settings and mounts that you use. So let's start with some basic suggestions on how I film water skiing. The most important thing is I always use a GoPro floaty or otherwise I will tether my GoPro wherever possible. This is super important as the cameras are expensive and you don't want to lose them. Now something also to be mindful of is that the cameras don't necessarily always float when they are attached to the mounts. Many years ago when I had my GoPro Hero 4 Black, I was using a long extended backpack mount that I'd made. However, the pole broke and even though I had the floaty, when the pole was attached to it, it still sunk. And this can be obviously very costly. The next thing is, I always shoot with ProTune mode on. No matter, even if you use ProTune in the most basic form, this will give you a higher bitrate and a better quality image. Then lastly, the other most important thing is shooting in the widest angle possible. So I generally always shoot my GoPro photos and videos in wide or in super view. This, this is because the camera is generally mounted very close to the skier. So you want to be able to capture the whole skier and you don't want to have your head or some of your body cut off. Now let's get down to business and find out the different mounts that I'm using. Let's start off with the most common question is on how I capture photos like this. Now these are great for photos as almost every photo that you capture is going to be unique. However, it's not so great for video as to get good stable video is very tricky as the camera is generally swinging around like mad. In order to take photos and mount this, I use the GoPro seat post mount attached to my handle and secured with some duct tape and my GoPro floaty. So you generally want to use the seat post mount somewhere between where the rope and the main line attaches because the further away you go from the video, the more likely you are going to be able to capture your entire body. Be careful that you only use the seat post mount and not necessarily the roll bar mount or one of GoPro's newer mounts. So next up is the suction mount. Now the suction mount is a really great angle as it shows the skier from low down capturing the entire skier's body. Now I actually won two GoPro photos of the day as well as a million dollar challenge uh, using the suction mount. So this just shows that it's great for both photos and for video. I'm using the three-way suction mount. Now this is really great because it gives you the most uh, stability on the, on the mount and it's the least likely to fall off, uh, especially when you're crossing the wakes. However, having said that, for the million dollar challenge, uh, Chris and myself, uh, we used the uh, single suction mount from GoPro and that allowed us to push the mount even further forward on the ski uh, and we didn't have any issues with that. So to set this, I usually uh, push my GoPro as far back as I can with the floaty. And as you can see, it won't go back any further. Um, and that's just because the floaty is stopping it. Uh, and that's generally the right angle that you want to shoot with that. So this mount you can also use on your trick skis and your jump skis. I've seen some really cool footage with the guys uh, having it on the back of their jump skis looking back at the ramp. Uh, as well as on the trick skis, which we've used uh, a number of times uh, to create some really cool uh, photos of the guys flipping. So a common question I get asked is why I don't use the GoPro or the adhesive mount uh, to attach it to the ski. Uh, the simple reason just being that you have flexibility with the suction mount and then you can move it uh, wherever you, uh, you know, think is going to be the best angle and it also doesn't leave any marks on the ski. So the recommended settings for taking photos is using burst mode uh, over 30 photos over 2 seconds as you really want to capture the skier going around the buoy. Obviously that would be triggered remotely from the boat or otherwise on time-lapse mode every half seconds for photos. For video, you definitely want to use super view. So I would be using 
uh, 1080 at 120 frames or 240 frames a second. Uh, otherwise, if I'm using my max mod lens, I'll put it in 2.7K uh, at 60 frames per second. So next up is the backpack or third person mount. Now these are some of the coolest photos and videos that you're ever going to shoot. The two most common backpack mounts is the Wiz mount and the Sail Video Systems. Both are great mounts to have. I found the most success with the Wiz mount uh, and that's because I found that it's got the shoulder straps uh, with a solid plate in here so it makes it quite tricky to ski but you get a super stable video uh, and the camera doesn't seem to move around too much. The Wiz mount is also fully adjustable with interlocking poles uh, and I've actually previously done a review video on that which I'll post the link up here. Then if we look at the sail uh, video systems mount, also uh, somewhat adjustable, you can move the pole up and down uh, as well as further back. However, having this around your waist, uh, I find the camera tends to move like this a lot uh, when I was skiing. But having said that, uh, Chris Rogers uh, creates some really epic content of the guys wakeboarding, uh, doing flips, uh, and most recently Hayden Smith also captured some cool content of the people uh, not only slaloming, uh, but also water ski ramp jumping. So to set my whiz mount up, uh, I'll usually push the camera straight upright uh, and the camera somewhat pointing down, bearing in mind that when the skier is leaning back, uh, this is going to be the correct angle. So don't worry about it being uh, almost from top down, uh, you're guaranteed to get some cool photos and video. Then uh, as a second shot, I'll often push the camera slightly further back, making sure that this can't touch the water when I'm going around the buoys uh, and that creates some really cool photos and videos when you turning as it almost looks like someone's in the water. Next, I'll use uh, this 90 degree mount as I'm coming out of my backpack. And what this allows it is to get the camera arm right in front of the skier uh, and really create some cool uh, photos as you can see here. Just be careful that the camera doesn't get stuck on the handle uh, as obviously this will end quite badly. So the recommended settings for using the backpack uh, mounts, uh, if using photo mode, uh, then you definitely want to go time-lapse mode every half second or otherwise using uh, photo burst mode Most likely 30 photos over two seconds if you can trigger that remotely from the boat uh, as that just um, Allows you to capture the skier going around the buoy much like the suction mount if you're using video uh, You definitely want to try use super view uh, So, you know put in the highest uh, possible frame rates at 1080 and then if you're using the max mod lens obviously 2.7 K 60 frames per second so next up, we're going to look at the POV or the mouth mount. Now this is another one of my favorites as it's a GoPro photo of the day winner. Now one of the most common questions I get asked is why I don't necessarily use the chest strap mount or a head strap or a helmet mount. Um, and if we just quickly look over these, uh, I found with the um, chest strap, the camera's mounted slightly lower down. So you tend not to see as much of your arms uh, in, in any of the content. Uh, the head or the head strap and the helmet mount. The helmet mount does work quite well, uh, but obviously it's just a bit of extra weight on your head. And then with the head strap, uh, my biggest worry is, it, is that it's always going to come off. So obviously if you're using those, make sure uh, you know you either tether it to yourself, to a life jacket, or use the floaty. So I'm using a, a fixed mouth mount, uh, and it's got no flex in it. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll put a photo up here to show you what I mean by that. Um, some of the mouth mounts that you get have got a bit of flex on the end of them, uh, and all that does is cause the video to shake a little bit, uh, you know, uh, when you're skiing. So you can see, uh, this is how I generally tether it around myself. Um, I put the camera upside down. And the simple reason for that is so the camera doesn't come back and whack you uh, in the nose. So obviously, if you're shooting up like that, when you go across the wake, it's going to come back and hit you in the nose. Whereas when it's upside down, you won't have that issue at all. Now, I've also created some really cool uh, content uh, with some driving photos using the mouth mounts. Uh, so definitely would recommend this uh, and it's quite a cheap mount to get as well. In terms of the various settings uh, for photos, definitely want to shoot on time-lapse mode every half second uh, because you're going to get some different angles going across the wake uh, and turning around the boys. Uh, and then for video, you want to put it on super view uh, as always. Next up is drones. Now, not only is a drone the most expensive accessory, but it's also the most fun to fly. I've had a number of different drones from the 3D Robotics drone to the GoPro Karma. Uh, my first drone was a Phantom 2. Uh, I've had the Mavic and now finally the Phantom 4 Pro. 
definitely if you're entering the market now there's no question you definitely want to go for any of the dji range uh, most likely the mavic air 2s or the phantom 4 pro uh, they're super easy to fly even if you've never flown drones before uh, you'll be able to capture some really cool content straight out the box now i've also lost more drones uh, than gopros which is quite scary to think about so you definitely want to make sure uh, that you're initially quite cautious with the drone obviously being an expensive accessory so usually i'll take off my drone somewhere from the land and the reason being is if you take off the drone from uh, the boat in the middle of the dam the home point is most likely going to be set uh, to that point in the middle of the dam or the lake and the problem is is if something goes wrong you go out of range the drone is going to come back to that point uh, and then obviously it's going to crash in the water if the boat's not there so as a starting point always take off uh, from somewhere on the land where the drone can come back to where there's not too many uh, power lines or roof structures nearby initially when i started filming uh, i used to fly from a fixed point uh, meaning that i either sat on the shore and flew my drone or would fly from uh, another boat just on the side of the slalom course i just found that easier uh, as not only uh, the boat moving and the drone moving uh, whereas at least I was in a fixed point, making it easier to fly. Only recently did I start flying uh, the drone from the boat. Uh, and as you can see, I've got some really cool uh, content from that. Another important tip is not to fly your drone too low. Uh, be wary of the skier spray. Uh, a few years ago, uh, I flew through the spray with Joel Howley. Uh, and that did as well, as you can see here, ultimately taking down the drone. Another common question I get asked is how I fly the drone uh, while still taking photos and videos of myself skiing. Now this is actually quite easy with the DJI drone. So you want to take off the drone from the shoreline. Uh, so your home point is set there on the shore. Then I'll usually idle out to the end of the course. Pick up the drone. Fly over to the course. Put it in position. And just leave the drone hovering there. So in other words there's nobody flying the drone from the boat. The drone is just hovering there. Uh, and it's either on video mode or on a time lapse photo mode. Uh, and I'll just leave the drone there. We'll go down, do the pass, when we get to the end, then I'll get in the boat, grab the remote again, and land the drone. Now obviously, uh, this is quite uh, a risky, but if you set your home point on the shore, you shouldn't have any issues whatsoever. Something else to also bear in mind is that when you're flying the drone, uh, you probably need to switch off the sensors if you want to keep up with the skier uh, at 58 kilometers an hour or 36 miles an hour. So in terms of settings, uh, this is a, a bit more tricky, uh, but usually I'll fly on 4K, uh, 60 frames per second for video. On photos, uh, if I'm flying the drone and taking photos of someone else, I'll shoot manually on RAW. Otherwise, if I'm taking photos of myself skiing, it will just be on time-lapse mode on the quickest interval possible. Next up is the tube mounts. Now, this is the most dangerous angle that we're going to shoot. Uh, so you really want to only do this with skilled drivers and skiers, uh, as this can go wrong very quickly. You've probably seen some water ski magazine covers and often wondered how they uh, shot that footage uh, and generally it's from a tube in front of the skier. So to do this, uh, as you can see here, uh, I usually sit sideways or backwards uh, on the tube uh, and we usually slow down the boat speed a little bit uh, just to make it a bit easier for myself uh, filming. I'll generally try to shoot with two cameras, uh, one on photo, one on video um, and here because it's not as close uh, I'll normally use narrow or wide in the video setting uh, and then just on the fastest or the highest frame rate possible and then most likely on time lapse mode for photos uh, or otherwise triggered from the boat uh, if we can do that. Now just some things to bear in mind uh, that obviously you don't want to fall off when you're doing this but secondly make sure that your feet uh, don't hit the rope or also that your feet don't hit the buoys uh, because if you have uh, foam buoys like we do then you're going to land up with some bad bruises on your legs. A slightly better suggestion than using a tube mount uh, is probably to use the rope mount with an extension bar on there as this will give you a very similar angle and it's a lot less scary uh, and you can do it on your own. I hope this video has helped you understand how I capture the various angles. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe over here. Thanks for watching.